Hey everyone, Till here. This is the artist review of the Huawei MateBook E Windows Tablet and the Huawei M Pencil 2. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from Huawei. Big thanks to them for making this review possible. And this review is going to be very long, so if you want to save time, you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video or check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. These are the specifications for the review unit I have. And just to give you the bottom line up front, the Huawei MateBook E 2022 is a well-designed, beautiful tablet with a very vibrant OLED display. The performance is decent given the specifications. Downsides for me would be the 4 to 5 hour battery life, the single USB-C, Thunderbolt 4 port. Drawing performance with the Huawei M Pencil 2 is a mixed bag for me. I will talk more about drawing later on. However, the handwriting and note taking performance with the pen is fantastic. Let's look at the items included in the box. Besides the tablet, there is a 65 watt USB-C charger and a 2 meter long USB-C to USB-C cable. This is not a video cable, so this is only for charging. This 65 watt charger can charge the tablet from 0 to 100% in 1.5 hours. Here in Singapore, the official retail price for the tablet is 1,998 Singapore dollars and it's sold as a bundle together with the official Huawei keyboard case and the Huawei M Pencil 2. This keyboard case is a bit different compared to other keyboard cases I have seen. So the connector is here. You can place the tablet here. There are magnets, so the two will snap together. The part that is different compared to other keyboard cases is you have to fold the stand from the top rather than fold it out from the bottom. And this tablet does not have a kickstand, so in order to prop up the tablet, you have to use the keyboard case or get another stand. Weight of the tablet is 709 grams, which I consider to be lightweight for a 12.6 inch tablet. Together with the keyboard case, this is 1.15 kg. So overall, this is very compact, very portable. There is no place on the keyboard case to store the pen though. The keyboard layout looks good. The buttons are spaced quite well, so this is definitely a keyboard you can speed type on. And the uh, keys have good travel, very responsive. The trackpad or touchpad is on the smaller side, but it works fine. There is no way to prop up the keyboard, so it's always flat, like a laptop keyboard. And there is no backlight. One thing I don't quite like is the keys can get fingerprint smudges quite easily. Let's look at the function buttons. We have shortcuts to control the brightness, the volume, dictation, lock screen, Huawei PC manager, the Wi-Fi button to turn on or off the Wi-Fi, the projection button, print screen, insert. My overall experience with typing on this keyboard is very positive. The Huawei MateBook E 2022 is a very beautiful tablet running Windows OS. The display is 12.6 inch OLED with very vibrant colors with excellent contrast ratio, 1 to 1 million contrast ratio. The resolution is 2560 by 1600. Pixel density is 240 ppi, so all the visuals are very sharp with no noticeable pixelation. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10. I would have preferred 3 by 2, but 16 by 10 is still good. This tablet is quite thin. It's about as thin as the included Huawei M Pencil 2. That's the connector for the keyboard case. And on the back, you can see a lot of fingerprint smudges because the back is very susceptible to fingerprint smudges. The back and front cameras are 13 and 8 megapixels respectively. That's the volume button. And here you can see fan grills. The fans are almost always on. You can hear them if you listen for them, but otherwise they will blend together with ambient noise. I find a single USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port on a Windows device to be very limiting. So if you want to connect to multiple USB devices, you will have to get a USB-C or a Thunderbolt 4 dock. For example, if you want to connect this to an external monitor, 
then you won't be able to charge the tablet at the same time. On this side, there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You may not see any speaker grills, but they are actually beneath and the audio quality is good. It's loud and clear. That's the power button and fingerprint sensor. Let's power this off and turn it on. So this is how fast the fingerprint sensor is and it's quite effective. There is a camera here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to color calibrate this display, so I cannot tell you the exact color measurement. For some reason, my Spider 5 Pro color calibrator cannot calibrate OLED displays. Anyway, the color support here is rated for P3. This tablet uses the 11th gen Intel i5 1130G7 processor, which is a quad core 1.8 GHz processor. This processor is good enough for text editing, web browsing, watching videos. 16 gigs of RAM works great for multitasking. And right now I have Lightroom open. This app is for photo editing. And just by opening this app, I can hear the fans uh, wrapping up, but it's not that noisy. You can edit photos. Um, actually the photo editing process is still quite smooth. Um, there isn't much lag, so I can get or see the edits almost instantly. But when it comes to importing the photos into the tablet onto the SSD, the import process is fast. But when it comes to drawing the previews for all these thumbnails, um, it takes much longer than I expected. This tablet and the processor is not going to be powerful enough to edit 4K videos. 1080p is all right, 4K is a definite no. With 4K, the playback will have a lot of drop frames. And even when I'm jumping around the timeline, it takes a split second before the preview actually shows the clip that I want. File transfer speed will be limited by the card reader. And once the video is imported into the software, it takes a very long time for the thumbnails or previews to draw and appear. A much longer time compared to importing photos. And when it comes to using video editing software on a 12.6 inch display, it's not ideal because typically these video editing apps, they work better on a much larger display. Video export time is actually all right. It takes around 11 minutes to export a five minute cut and join video. The Intel Iris Xe graphics is capable of some light gaming. However, when the tablet heats up, it's going to drop the frame rate. So with this game Hades, which I don't think is a very graphics intensive game, I can get around 50 FPS. And when the tablet becomes hot, it drops to 30 FPS. So this is not a gaming tablet. Nowadays, it's quite common for devices to have collaborative features and Huawei has that too. And it's called Huawei Super Device. So let's see what Huawei Super Device can do. On the left side here, I have a Huawei MatePad Pro tablet. So I need to use the Huawei PC Manager app to use the collaborative features. Let's connect to the Huawei MatePad Pro. So what I'm trying to do here is to extend the Windows desktop over to the MatePad Pro and it's now connected. So this is Wi-Fi connection and the latency response is actually pretty good. I don't really see much lag. And the image quality is also quite good on the extended display. With extended desktop, you can use Windows apps on the Huawei MatePad Pro. For drawing apps, there is noticeable latency. With the Huawei PC Manager, you can arrange the layout for the displays, but you cannot rotate the orientation. And you cannot rotate the orientation with Windows settings as well. For some reason, that doesn't work. And you can change the audio output to the MatePad Pro tablet if you want to. The second feature is wireless file transfer. So I've just quit the extended desktop mode and switch over to collaborate mode. So now I can drag a file from this Windows desktop over to the MatePad Pro. Just click 
and drag and you will see the cursor cross over to the MidPad Pro. So the file has already been transferred through the local Wi-Fi network into this Huawei share folder that is inside the files directory. You can transfer files to and fro from either systems and you can have your cursor go across both systems and you can use your keyboard on that system as well. So when the cursor is on the tablet, I can use the keyboard for that tablet. One thing I have not figured out is how to do the Huawei share by right clicking on the file. So I just want to right click on the file and transfer it over wirelessly, but I can't seem to do that. So I can only drag and drop. Let's look at the pen. This is the Huawei M Pencil 2. This is an active stylus with palm rejection and supports tilt and slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. There are two nib options with the pen. The matte textured plastic nib has more resistance on glass, so this is better for drawing and mine is quite worn out. The other one has a platinum coated metal tip, which is smoother on glass and this is better for writing. The Huawei M Pencil 2 behaves very much like a Windows stylus, so you don't actually need to pair the pen to the tablet in order to use it. If you attach it to the top here, it's just going to charge the pen. It's not going to pair the pen. When the pen tip is near the display, a cursor will appear. There are some apps that do not show the cursor though. The display is laminated, so there is no gap between the line beneath the pen nib. The pen has fantastic writing performance. There is a stray dot here. The pen provides palm rejection, however, it's not flawless and how well palm rejection works will depend a lot on the apps you use. So with this app, there is no palm rejection mode. So if I write or draw with my finger, I can actually introduce stray strokes. This app is concepts and it has palm rejection mode. So if I use my finger or palm on the display, you can see it actually moves the canvas around. It will not introduce any stray strokes. So palm rejection here is flawless, it's perfect. And now it's time to talk about the drawing performance. The drawing performance of the Huawei M Pencil 2 and the MateBook E is a mixed bag. Drawing performance is very dependent on the app you use. The app I like to use for my line test is Minibank Paint Pro because this software does not provide any software correction to the lines. So whether the lines are jittery or wobbly or straight, that's the exact performance you can expect from the pen. And unfortunately, it seems like this software has some glitches on this tablet. So when I try to draw curves or circles, there are straight strokes. You can see the straight stroke here and here, and the lines are exceptionally wobbly. So I can't tell you whether or not these lines are representative of the lines that you can actually get with the M Pencil 2. In this case, the lines have some jitter and they are not able to taper smoothly and sharply. So you can see the end is quite abrupt and it's rounded. So here the problem is definitely with the software because on the MatePad Pro tablet, and with Mi Bang Paint Pro, I can get the lines to taper more sharply. So let's test the lines with Photoshop instead. So the slow diagonal lines have slight jitter, but it's actually not too bad. Let's draw in the other direction. So this is actually not too bad. So the lines are also unable to taper sharply. So if you want to draw things that taper sharply, such as grass, this is not going to look right. And you can see for some of the strokes, they have this very thin end. Let's do the same line test with Clip Studio Paint. So the slow diagonal lines are quite straight. Maybe there is 
very slight jitter. Let's change the direction. So there is very slight wobble, but not too bad. Let's look at how the strokes taper, and this is also not good. The strokes are not able to taper very sharply. Clip Studio is an app where you can make all sorts of adjustments to the lines. However, the thing is you have to spend the time and effort to make those adjustments because the lines by default don't come out looking right. Initial activation force for the pen is quite low. So I can draw thin lines um, easily. Have the thin lines become thick and transition back to very thin lines easily. So this is good. You can detect minimal pressure changes when you're not using that much pressure. And let's test the tapering strokes. Nope, doesn't look good. With most of the apps that I've tested, the lines, they just don't taper that smoothly and sharply. However, that doesn't mean that you can't use the pen for drawing. So this is a quick sketch that I have drawn with concepts. And when you look at this sketch from afar, it actually looks kind of nice. At least I think so. But when you zoom in close, um, wow. See the lines here? Very wobbly. Now I'm going to delete the lines and redraw again. So when you have wobbly lines, you will have to spend the time to delete the lines and redraw again. And now, for some reason, the lines are straighter, noticeably straighter, but still I can see slight cheater, but this is much better than earlier. Okay, again, I see slight cheater. Yep there is definitely slight wobble or jitter with the lines. My style is a bit loose, very wobbly, and it helps disguise the jitter and wobbly nature of the lines, at least with this particular app. One thing that also affects drawing experience is palm rejection. And what I'm about to say applies to Windows tablets, not specific to this Windows tablet. There is palm rejection, yes. However, notice I have turned off the taskbar because sometimes when I'm drawing, my hand would actually touch the buttons here and launch some apps, which obviously is going to affect workflow. And sometimes when I accidentally swipe from the right side, you can see this Windows feature here. Again, it breaks the workflow. I have to push this back and go back to drawing. Or you could be drawing and your palm can actually drag a palette out onto the canvas. So this app is Affinity Photo and I would say it actually performs quite well when it comes to drawing. So even though earlier I said the strokes, they can't taper, but you can still draw tapering strokes. You just have to be more conscious. For example, now I want the stroke here to taper from thick to thin. I just have to apply more pressure here and apply less pressure here. And that was how I managed to draw all these uh, strokes here. You can see thick becomes thin, here thick becomes thin, and here is thick becomes uh, thin. Let's look at another sketch that I drew. Again, this is a quick sketch. Let's look at the diagonal line. So I can see slight jitter or wobble with the diagonal lines, but it's not too bad. So for these lines, I actually drew them quite quick and I can see slight wobble, slight jitter and wobble. Here's another quick sketch I drew with concepts. The brush that I'm using for this sketch does not react to pressure as well, so the line thickness is always consistent. 
let's look for wobbly or jittery lines and I can see slight wobble and jitter even for this horizontal straight line but overall the sketch um, looks fine this is my daughter under my table if i look at this sketch i won't be able to tell if there are any issues with the pen due to the brush that i use and also my drawing style however with the earlier sketch i can see the wobbly lines here um, anyway the drawing performance really depends a lot on the apps you use so you have to know the limitation with this pen and the tablet and work around those limitations to give you the best results next i want to talk about battery life let's run the battery report based on my past few days usage the battery life is about four to five hours if your usage involves using the tablet outdoors very often battery life is a huge concern it is important to note that lithium batteries have a lifespan and battery capacity can drop with usage and based on the information i have found online it seems like battery capacity can drop to 80 percent after 300 to 500 charge cycles since the battery life for this tablet is about four to five hours this tablet probably needs to be charged two times a day so if you use this tablet daily one year later the charge cycle may go up to 700 i'm not sure what the battery capacity for this tablet will be like with 600 to 700 charge cycles after a year or 1200 to 1400 charge cycles after two years all right to conclude the huawei matebook e2022 is a sleek looking compact portable tablet with a very beautiful OLED display just like all tablets and laptops there are limitations and the limitations are the processing power which is actually quite all right for light to medium usage for office work and even for editing photos and maybe 1080p videos but it's not ideal for gaming the other limitation is the single USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port which is really quite limiting for a Windows tablet. Battery life is just 4 to 5 hours and the pen has issues with tapering strokes and slight wobble and jitter with slow diagonal lines. If you don't draw, drawing performance is not going to matter. The pen still has fantastic writing and note-taking performance. But if you do draw, note that drawing performance can vary depending on the apps you use. Alright, I hope my review of the MateBook E2022 is useful. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.